Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am back at a house. I recently did a 200 amp service upgrade in and today we're going to be replacing the wiring that's done for this laundry receptacle and for the dry receptacle. It's just a piece of Romex hanging down the wall and we're going to attach half inch EMT conduit and make this a safer, more practical solution than having the circuit just hang off the wall like it is now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the circuits are actually off. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over to the main panel. We'll disconnect the circuits, then we'll verify that the circuits are off, and then we'll be ready to work. All right, so the dryer's off. But the laundry is still on, so let's see here. All right, good. So now both of the circuits are off. I've checked them both. This one's off for sure. All right, and this one's also off. So the plan is to Oh, this is only a three wire. I have to get a new cord. All right, so what they did was, you get the old three wire cord here. So whoever did this didn't do this right. We're gonna put in a four wire receptacle. And so now we gotta have to also change the cord. Uh, not a big deal, but we'll do it right the first time, right? You know what we say? So what I wanna do is I wanna bring this back and actually have it drop down the wall over here. So we'll, stick, we'll bring it back. And as you can see here also, this wire just kinda comes underneath the beam here, a little sloppy looking. So we're gonna pull this back, run it into this bay over here, and then drop it down for the EMT. All right, so I'm gonna leave this just flapping in the breeze for the time being. Look at this thing. This is what it was mounted to. What is that? All right, so the idea is I've already measured the conduit using half inch EMT, and I'm going to mark it at 30 inches times twice, and then we'll put a from to connector up at the top. Our box is gonna land somewhere in this vicinity right here. We're gonna move this laundry receptacle over so it's out of the way of this plumbing right here. Whoever did that is kind of a knucklehead because there's a clean out right here and the box is right in the way of the clean out. So that's why I'm putting it over here. This will be a GFCI receptacle and this will be a four wire, 30 amp, 250 volt receptacle. Here's 30. It's also important to deburr where you just made those cuts. The reason why we do that is so when we pull the conductors through, it doesn't rip the insulation. Now, the proper way to bend an offset, a box offset, and what I mean by a box offset is when you put this box up against the wall right here, the actual knockout's maybe like a half inch or a quarter inch away from where the opening is. So you have to bend an offset into the conduit, and that's called a box offset. The best way to do that, to get the best results, is to make your first mark at two inches and your second mark at four and a half. Let's see, here's two, here's four and a half. And then we bend the 10 degrees on both marks. Now some guys, like myself, I usually just do the, uh, I don't measure, I just look and I'm usually pretty close to where I need to be. But since I'm making a video here, I figured the right way, I figured I'll show you how, the right way how to do it. So here we have a half inch thin wall bender. And on the bender, there's these marks. I don't know if you can see those marks. The bend at 10 degrees, 22 degrees, 30 degrees, and 45 degrees are marked right there. Then of course, I mostly use this arrow that is there. 
That's where I set, that's where I place the marks on my conduit and then bend. So what I'm gonna do with this first bend, line up the first mark right on the arrow and bend it to 10 degrees. And then I'm gonna go turn it around and put the second mark on the arrow and bend this one to 10 degrees again. And 10 degrees really isn't that much. And so there's my box offset. I don't know if you can see that very well. Alrighty. But the idea is to put it up against the wall here and it should come right into the top of my box. Just nice. Now I'm gonna mark the holes for my anchors. I'm just gonna do two on the box here and then we'll drill the box. You guys are funny, make them, not making fun of you, you were just surprised to see me actually use them at the wall. But I heard about this drill, this is the, this is the DC, DCD 1007, so it's a very powerful drill. So I wanted to see what it was all about, so that's why I purchased it. It's about $300. And you gotta make sure that the drill is in hammer drill mode. Get this done quick. I'm gonna get the box situated here, make sure it's straight and level, then we'll draw for our straps and then we'll take it back down and we'll slide this uh, piece of 10-3 through the conduit. All right, so what we call it is a front tube, but obviously you can see this connector right here. This fits onto the conduit and then there's like a strap up here to hold the cable in place. In the trade, we call that a from two connector. Why? Not exactly sure. But this is always a work in progress with the wiring. Much easier, see that? Now we set this in place again. Wrap this equipment grounding conductor around the green screw here and the whole box and EMT is now grounded. <clears throat> and yes, you do have to use all the screws provided here to attach the receptacle to the cover here. The words are written on there, right? I don't know if you can see it, but this is green and white. So they're always gonna be opposite of the, the, the ground and the neutral. Those are gonna be on opposite ends. And then you obviously the other two are the hots. Obviously there's our neutral. All right, and now both the hots. This is one hot, this is the other hot, or L1 and L2 we'll call it. <clears throat>
wire circuit. Now we're going to do the laundry receptacle right next to it. Actually, this time I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to go for it here. And I'm going to stick the end of my conduit right to where the bender shoe ends here. And just bend a little bit and then slide it up and then bend a little bit more. And that should be my half inch, well, whatever it is, quarter inch box offset, we'll call it. All right. In order for this GFCI to fit in this GFCI cover, this uh, block cover here, all right, obviously it fits this way, but you can see what gets in the way, right? These two ears and then the old plate cover, <clears throat> we got to cut those out of there and then we're going to attach it to the cover by using 632 screws that came with the, the, the receptacle device and then nuts that actually come with the uh, cover plate. So that's why I'm cutting off these ears right now. And they come off pretty easy. And I just cut this one out here. Otherwise, it's not going to fit onto the cover. And I like to put the cover onto the, the device, attach the device to the cover before I attach the wiring to it because I've just found that over the years that it's easier this way. I just take the nut here. I use the long screws on the device because the, the short screws they give you with the plate, it's too much of a pain in the neck. I got these big giant sausage fingers. And so I just slide the nut on like that. And then I hold the nut with my finger in the back here while I take my cordless driver, just holding the nut. And just make it as tight as possible. Right there, that's not going anywhere. With the short screws here, with these short bolts that come with the plate, it's much more difficult to get the nut onto the bolt. Which is why I like using the longer bolts that come with the GFCI device. So now you guys might remember this panel, clothes dryer, okay, boom, and the laundry receptacle, boom, 241 volts, L1 to L2, 120 to ground, 120 to neutral. Hundred and twenty to neutral, and then one hundred and twenty volts to ground. So we are good. Hey, if you gained any value from watching this video and you learned something you didn't know before, maybe this helped you do your own DIY project, or you're a young electrician trying to get become a journeyman or get your license, and you learned something, do me a favor, hit that like button. Reset. Trip. <clears throat> Beautiful. Reset. All set. I really wanted to show you what the difference was between a three-wire setup and a four-wire setup. In the old days, the three-wire setup was okay. We had L1 and L2, which provided us the 240 volts that we needed to start the electric dryer. 
and we just had a ground wire that was bonded to the neutral or rather a neutral wire that was bonded to the frame and the theory was it was just a little bit of current might be flowing on the metal frame uh, as we got more advanced as a trade okay and the electrical trade we found out that the neutral is actually a current carrying conductor okay so what we want to do is we want to run an extra grounding conductor separate from the neutral making it a four wire so that current would not flow on this metal frame as you're about to see as i show you the show you what's going on here the camera as obviously the dryer here has a bond between the neutral this is the white wire right here for the frame for the frame it's bonded to the frame through the neutral okay they go back to the same place in the panel but the problem is the neutral is a current carrying conductor it's going to carry the imbalance between l1 and l2 all right so if we got 10 amps here and 9 amps here the neutral is going to carry one amp and if it's bonded to the frame that means you have one amp of current not voltage one amp of current flowing on this flame on the frame not the flame so what we're going to do is we're going to get a four wire cord and we're going to disconnect the jumper between the neutral and the equipment ground on the frame here so the frame will be independent of the neutral conductor and we won't have any possibility of current flowing on this metal frame. All right, so what I like to do is I like to put a three quarter inch connector on there instead of using this piece of crap. There you have it. Good. So, obviously it's working. Beauty. If you like this video and you learned something from it, please do me a favor, hit that like button. And if you wanna see more content just like this, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.